<clears throat> What's proper T substitute squad? So I know y'all thought I forgot about them these uh stinking ass salt wives. No, I ain't forgot about them. This is season five, episode six. Um, Mafia Wives and Mafia Wives and Bad Vibes. So the episode starts with Angie putting wanted pictures um over the other cast ladies' houses. Well, not over their houses. She sent one of her associates. Um, to send them an invite to her 25th wedding anniversary, and she's doing a mob wives theme. Um, I mean, hey, what a theme is a theme. I'm on that. Um, so Lisa gets the invite, and she says she's glad that she got one, but she's shocked that she's invited at the same time. Lisa tells Henry and John what Angie said about her parenting. Uh, Henry says that she's a great mom, and she should have took her outside and boxed with her, because that's what he do with his friends. And then the family calls Jack. I will say this, Lisa. It was real cringeworthy sitting there listening to you telling your son what the hell Angie done said. Leave children in children's places, okay? You having that conversation with his daddy is one thing. You sitting over there talking to the both of them about what she done said is just ridiculous to me. Like, it is. Like, that is just so ridiculous to me. And it's like, you're supposed to be up here proving that you're a good parent, girl. You doing shit like that don't help your case none. Because we're supposed to be keeping churn and churn places. Like, you you ain't, that won't none hit business. It's bad enough that he got to see her on TV. You're like, that won't none hit business. Leave him up out of that, girl. What is he supposed to say to um Angie? Nothing. <sighs> And I'm glad Jack doing I. Right. So Whitney meets up um, with Meredith and Whitney apologizes for going so hard on her down to the Milwaukee. So Lisa says that she got verbal confirmation that Lisa was the one that planted that, uh, that article about her buying her stuff from Alibaba and she's selling it to the, to the girls for 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 dollars a pop, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> Meredith tells her that she should just keep an open mind and make sure that the information that she receives is credible. And then in her confessional, she goes on to say that she feels like Heather Whitney, I mean, is only telling her any of this because she's still trying to wrangle her in on a bandwagon. One, I believe you, Meredith. I do. I believe you. But um, at the same time, Meredith, all you ever wanted from her was an apology. And here she is offering you. So, I mean, I am glad that you accepted the apology or whatever, but listen, her telling you about it don't put you in the middle of it. You put you being in the middle of it is you like talking about it or forcing them to talk or doing this or doing that. I, I don't necessarily think her telling you about it is you being in the middle of it because she could tell you about it, but you ain't got to open your mouth and say a goddamn thing because it ain't none of your business. People tell me they business all the time, but I don't go play running back and forth with people business because that's how I stay out of it. Whatever a person tells me is what they tell me, and I'm not going to go and run my mouth back to the next person because why? I don't want to be in it because when I do that and then they go and get back to them and they compare notes and then my name been in it, then I'm in it. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Whatever somebody tell me, it stays locked in. I don't go off and tell nobody else this, this, that, and this. That's how I stay neutral. So, I mean, y'all really need to understand, like, just because somebody tells you something, that don't automatically puts you in some shit. It only happens when you play around it. That's what puts you in. Staying neutral is just shutting the hell up. I mean, I mean, I mean moving on. Mary is at home, and um, Robert Jr. is just coming home with his wife, Lexi. And then she opens up about him. Listen, this, I got to tell you, I am thoroughly enjoying Mary this season. I'm really shocked that I'm saying this. But I am thoroughly enjoying Mary this season. I am. I appreciate her willingness to be open finally and um, get up off of this BS that she was on during the first few seasons. I'm glad that she's clocking in to work and she's opening it up more and she's allowing people to get to see her. And it's like, this is the Mary that I can dig, to be honest. This is the Mary that I can dig. That uppity, stuck up, I'm a preacher's wife, I preach the gospel to this cultist ass church and blah, blah, blah. All that she was given first season was complete muck. Like, I, I hated it. 
this Mary, I can rock with. And so since I can rock with it, Mary, this is what I am going to tell you. And I, and I say this with love, Mary, and I want you to hear me good when I tell this to you. Hold on. Your son on crack, your son on cocaine, your son on methamphetamines, okay? Your son is a baser from way back. When I saw that child come up in that house with that wife, I'm telling you, they look like they just crawled from under the same bridge Sheila ass slept under with her damn boyfriend. Y'all know Sheila, uh, Mammy Egbert, um, Ashley Darby, Mama Round Dead to Potomac. That's what they look like. They look like two ho lost homeless hobos <laughs> that just came up on $40 and they was able to get them a room for two hours down to the Super 8. Like that's who, that's what they gave. Okay, they look like they reek. They look like they stunk. Like they look like they would have got pulled over by every cop known to man walking around y'all damn neighborhood. I'm shocked that the people allowed them to get through the gate, looking the way that they was looking when they was walking up. There. Like it made no sense. I said, where the hell is y'all coming from, dressed? <laughs> where the hell is y'all coming from, dressed like that? Like. It's not funny because I do know Mary Sell really is going through some things and they say he getting himself together and I'm glad he is. You need to get rid of Lexi because I do believe a lot of what Mary say. When that girl came up into your life, it went to shit. You need to let Lexi go. I do. I feel like you really do. You need to let Lexi go. Um, you need to get yourself into some rehab, which they say is. And you need to find you a job and you need to do right by your mama. That's what you need to do because you got up here and embarrass the absolute fuck out of your mama. Like, I, I, it is. It is. It's a huge embarrassment considering your mama got up here first season being all rich and fabu and posh and fabulous. And, you know, I, I, I get the high quality this and the high quality that. And my bags get made from Paris. And, and you know, the people from London come and make my dresses and so on and some such. And y'all got this going on. You coming in the house looking like that. Like, it's an embarrassment, Robert Jr. Where Uncle Grandpa? Anyway, Brown would come through Ryan here for the first time. And she bring her some tight ass plant, I guess. Uh, Mary ain't like that damn plant. You can see it all over her face, but whatever. And <laughs> and they talk about her situation with her daughter, Gwen. And then they also talk about how Heather's being two-faced. Listen, let me tell y'all something. Everybody wants to go up for Brownwin. Whatever. But in my opinion, Brownwin ain't doing nothing. No, but she's doing the same damn thing. The only difference is she's doing it in everybody's faces. But I mean, she's no better than Heather. Like everybody wants to go in and let have and want to go up. But the way I see it is she's no better than Heather. She's the same as all of them. She don't mind staring no fucking pot. She don't mind being messy. She don't mind running back saying this, saying that. I mean, it's all the same stuff. Because my thing about it is you don't even know Angie like that. I mean, yeah, y'all getting cool, but you don't know her like that for it to have touched your soul to enough to go around there and tell her any damn thing. But you know, you a lot like Monica. You want to be up on this show. And this is the new formula. I see it. Monica done started something. And I told y'all this last season. Monica started something. I said that. I said, now the new people going to get up here and they going to play the same game Monica playing. That's the same thing Monica did. Why y'all mad with me? I did the same thing that everybody else is doing. I mean, it's basically the same thing that Bronwyn is doing. Why y'all mad with me? I'm just doing the same thing y'all doing. The only difference is I'm calling it out. I mean, she's no different than the rest of them. If it's all of that, you can add her ass to it because she's no different. Coming up here wearing all these damn costumes and because that's what they are. They're costumes. Tired, tacky, god awful ass costumes at that. But because they got a name on it and it costs more than five dollars, you don't mind draping it across your body and calling it fashion. Like, I mean, I guess, Brown, I, I, I mean, I'm saying, considering what you had going on and what your daughter had going on, it makes sense why you why why you think the way that you think. Like, I I, I can see that. Don't get me wrong. Some people may think she's cool for reality TV and that's cute, but I see through all that bullshit. She ain't no better than none of them, girl. Moving on.
Angie and Sean's anniversary party. And Angie invites Meredith and she does come through and support. I guess Meredith. Meredith tells Whitney that she should talk to Lisa ASAP about the situation. She will feel a lot better and she won't be in the middle. I already talked about that. You not being in the middle is you stand out of it. You don't have to go play. You don't have to do what Brian was doing. Run it back, back and forth between the two camps saying this, saying that. Like being neutral is just being quiet. Um, Brittany comes through with her date, Aaron, and Heather knows him. And she know him real good in the biblical sense to let her tell it. But we going to move on from that. <laughs> okay. We going to move on from that. But that's what my friend say. My friend says she know that man. All right. She know him physically. Emotionally, they got they got some soul tags going on right now. Moving on, how good was it though, Heather? <laughs> Moving on, um, Mary calling Aaron Jared, and she's really confused. Listen, Mary, you messy as <laughs> Mary, you messy. Mary walked right on over there and said, "Hey, Jared, how are you?" No, nah, that ain't no damn Jared. That's a damn Aaron. It's, 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 <laughs> We'll get on that in a second. Angie talks to Heather about what she just learned from Brawin. Wait a minute. Brawin telling Angie about Heather telling Lisa about the comment about her parents. See, this is what I'm talking about. I don't understand what y'all so upset with Heather for because it's basically the same. If, if, if this is what we're doing, then this is the same damn thing. Like it is. It is. This is the same damn thing. And to be real, I don't even think Bronwyn is doing it because she genuinely likes her. I just think she wants to be on the show. And this is just the formula that she's choosing to go by. She's just going to do the same thing that everybody else is doing. But then she's going to call out and say, but you can't be a hypocrite about it because you do the same thing. You do this, this, that. She said it herself in the last point. You can't get mad at her for doing this if y'all do this. I mean, so, I mean, like I say. She's the same damn thing. Like, there's nothing no better about Brown. It's not. It's nothing no better about Brown. It ain't. It's, it's really not. But whatever. Um, Because now you stirring up issues between them. You don't even know Angie. <laughs> you don't even know Angie. Don't get me wrong. Because people are going to swear up and down that I'm just taking up for Heather. Listen, don't get me wrong. Do I feel as though Heather is moving a little bit funny when it comes to Angie? Yeah, I do. Because if y'all been friends for so long, it's like I say, you could get your friend together in private. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay to let your friend know, hey, listen, like the way you handling that situation with, with, with Angie and she's supposed to be your friend, your friend like that. Like, no, the way you handling that situation with Lisa, and she's supposed to be your friend like that. Like, come on, friend. You know that ain't right. Like, I agree with y'all on it. She doesn't have to be so buddy, buddy, chummy, chummy with Lisa. She doesn't. And I don't know why she's choosing to be so buddy, buddy, and chummy, chummy with Lisa. Because like I say, I would not trust Lisa. Lisa was so nasty to y'all in the first first couple of seasons. Like for me, I wouldn't necessarily have her as an enemy, but I wouldn't be so friendly with her either. I wouldn't be so quick to have her back. I wouldn't be so quick to jump into her shit. Even if I could help her out, I still wouldn't be so quick to do it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, I totally get all it. I get all it. But uh, whatever. Um, Jared come through because he was invited by Justin. Justin was being messy and he invited him to come around it because why would you invite? Why would you? Like, of all people, you just so happen to invite him. Of all people, Justin, out of all the people in your Rolodex that you could have called to invite, it just had to be Jared. Like, Justin, you is so messy. You you is messy. And then you said over there, now you done got uh, Brittany all in her feelings. Now she crying. She there with a whole new piece of dick, and she crying over Jared ass. Jared ain't had no business showing up because I know for a fact Jared knew that it was a huge possibility that Brittany was going to be there. Like, 
It's just like manipulation 101. It's gaslighting 101. It is. Like the manipulation, the gaslighting that's going on around there is ridiculous. Like, I really feel like y'all are praying on uh, Britney's polar emotions. Like, <laughs> Britney turned into a complete basket case. And she there with a whole new dick. She saw that man and then she just completely turned into it. Like, she crying and had to go all off into the corner. She got polar Aaron in there to fend for his damn self. Like, I... Anyway, Whitney and Lisa go off to talk. Whitney tells Lisa what she heard. Lisa denies it and asks her who told her that because she finna sue him. Then she get on her phone and she calls Sean, her attorney. Um, and she tells him that she need they need to find out who this is and go the distance on him because it's about her character. And then John and Justin finna knuckle up, honey, because Lisa the poor John uh, Justin up into it, calling it her calling Whitney a lie. And then Jason stood up for his wife, which in turn had John stand up for his wife. And then it's going to be some white on white crap, um, some white on white violence. OK, some Caucasian on Caucasian melee down to the next episode. I'm here for it. <laughs> OK, I'm here for it. We always see these niggas knucking and bucking and ready to fight. So I'm here to see what these Caucasians are going to do. OK, I'm going to see what type of furniture movement they finna do next week. Down to this lady house, all because of John messy ass. Child. Not John, Jonathan messy ass. Justin, I mean. Child, that's the end of the episode. I'm sick of them. <laughs> I'm sick of them. I am. Listen, Bronwyn is good for TV, but she's no different and she's no better and she's just as two fit. Y'all can call it real, all y'all want. Bronwyn has an arterial motive for everything that she's doing. And I don't think it got a damn thing to do with friendship. I don't. She She's giving a Monica T to me, y'all. It's going to come out like I, I like it always do. I tell y'all this about people and then y'all poo-poo and pee pee it until it come out later on that line. Then y'all want to believe me. Don't believe me. <laughs> don't believe me. Don't get me wrong. She good for reality TV. I don't mind giving her that. But... Mm -hmm. The damn show ain't genuine. It, for fuck's sake, I got nothing to do with no friendship. Trust and believe you me. She wants to be on TV, honey. Okay, she wants to hold her snowflake, baby. That's what she wants to do. I mean, hey. Y'all drop down in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about last night's episode. And yeah, hopefully I see y'all tonight at 930 for the chasing panel. Um, it's chasing Orlando's reunion, honey. The reunion look like it's gonna be a key, so definitely make sure that y'all be at Scotty's house tonight at 9 30, 8 30 central time. Uh, for the chaser panel, y'all don't want to miss out on that. And um, shirt look big on me, and I don't know why this is an extra large. Don't tell me I got to go down to a large, bitch. Ooh, go me, go me. Go me, go me, and I won't on no, and I won't on no old shot either. Uh, go me, go me, go me, go me. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got to know. Hopefully, I see y'all tonight at 9, 30, 8, 30 Central Time. And with that having been said, I'm gone, bitch. Bye.